everyone, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel and craft table. The project I'm bringing you today is, is kind of unique and um, I really am excited to share it with you. So in one of my last videos, I made these infusible ink coasters. If you haven't already seen that, I am going to link that for you so you'll be able to get to that quickly. When I weeded these designs, they weeded so beautifully and I actually saved those pieces. I'm going to show you how to marry those orange pieces with this buffalo check here. And we're going to do, not only are we going to do an offset, but we're going to do an inlay. So it'll make it super easy to place I'm going to be placing these pieces inside some space in here. I'm not going to put them directly on top, but I'm actually going to inlay them into um, this infusible ink sheet so that we'll have one cohesive layer when we go to press the muck. I'm a firm believer in um, when possible, shop your craft space and use your materials until literally you have absolutely nothing left because we all know that crafting can get very expensive. So I'm going to be uh -huh. using my, my beautiful scraps that are still ready, ready, waiting to be used on a project. I'm going to use this infusible ink sheet. This is called Patterns Black Shapes and it comes with this stripey version here and then it comes with the buffalo check. You know, this just screams holiday, if you ask me. And let me set these aside. And then our mug will match our coaster. So this is a 15 ounce Cricut mug. And the 15 ounce mugs come in their own box inside of the packaging. So they come in a pack of two. And inside that box are two of these. What I like about these 15 ounce mugs is that they are they come with their own box so they're easy to give as gifts and you know you can never have too much coffee anyway they are all bubble wrapped and they have this um, plastic wrap around them so we'll we'll take that out later when we're ready to prepare the mug it's just something i wanted to share with you and then if you if you're making the mug for yourself and you don't need to you know, gift in a box to yourself, save these boxes because these can be used as gift boxes for other purposes that you might have in gift giving. Okay, let's go ahead, let's do this. Let's head over to Design Space because I'm gonna show you not only how to do the mug design setup, but how to prepare that um, sheet, how to prepare that image to receive these words and that pumpkin shape that I already have cut out. And this is how I actually managed to do multicolor, multi, you know, um, infusible ink. So it gives me that layering effect, just like we would if we were doing adhesive or iron on vinyl. Here in Design Space, I've already brought up a blank canvas and I have already brought in the Hello Fall and the pumpkin pieces from the previous project of the coasters and basically I went into the coasters project and I literally did um, control C for both of these items brought them into here did control V super easy as far as the mug let's go to images and we're going to search for mug design setup I actually um, have it here because sometimes I go look for it but mug design setup and setup is one word and as long as you have the one word and you click on that then you're going to get this right you're going to get all this this is all images you can use these pre images if you want to okay um you can see here like we've got a straight edge uh looks like this is a straight fit you hover over it, it says straight 15 ounce regular ceramic mug design and then you've got the wavy 12 ounce. So you can go through here and you can figure out, see here's the ripped 15 ounce. The ripped is my favorite, but I think for today, I'm gonna go ahead and just do the straight. So I'm gonna click the little plus sign. Okay, and then it'll be in my canvas. Now, had I gone over to projects instead of images, and if I were to do mug design setup, 
then you get these, all right? And you can see here at the top, I've bookmarked a lot of these. So the your design here comes in two sizes, the mug design setup. So this is, um, you've got several different options and you've got all of these little, um, like here's the ripped one and the this is the scalloped one, the zigzag, the straight, and there is a wavy. And then you've got these others, right? So you have these here and these and these and these. So basically I have bookmarked a lot of stuff. So there we go. That's the, how you find your mug designs. I'm gonna go back to canvas. And actually I'm gonna click that little X and go back to my canvas. And then it's gonna bring in that mug design setup. Now there's a couple of things that we gotta do to get this the way it needs to be. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to click on that little arrow and bring it down. And then we have this grayed part here. That's actually the top layer. I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna just move it here. There we go. I'm just gonna move it on top of this clear one here. Now this, this one here, I'm gonna change that to white. Okay, so now that I have these mug design layers in the order that I need them, let's do this. Um, I'm actually, I have a buffalo check pattern that I downloaded from Creative Fabrica. Let's go to pattern fill. So I'm just going to upload. I'm going to go to pattern fill. I'm going to go to upload pattern. And then I'm going to go grab that particular buffalo check pattern. Here we go. There we go. All right. So then it comes in. All right. So it's going to look like this. It's going to be a print and cut pattern. I'm going to do upload. Okay. Once it says pattern upload successful, then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on that little black layer there. And I'm going to go down here to the basic cut and let's see, I'm going to go to print and cut down here because you know, and then I'm going to go in here to pattern and that I'm going to grab that and I'm really just doing this. I want you to get a visual feel for, um, you know, and you can actually edit the pattern. You can, you know, move it over left and right, up and down. You can make it bigger. You can make it smaller. Um, I will do a video on patterns another day, but so this is what it looks like. Okay. And let's see, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that. Not because I'm actually going to do a printing cut, but I'm going to do, let's see, let's go back to basic and I'm going to leave it like this. Cause when I go to cut, um, I don't want it to um, have to, to cut anything. So I don't want it to have to want to print anything. Let's go ahead and let's start working on the actual mug. So this is what the mug's going to be like. And then my thought was, you know, most people would probably just say, oh, I'm just going to place that on top. And this one's also orange. So I'm going to go to color and orange. And then I'm going to place that one on top. Okay, so most people would probably think to do that, but I want to show you the coolest thing ever. So I'm going to bring this down here so you can see what's happening. And here's what we're going to do. We are going, they're on the Hello Fall, and we're going to go up here to Offset. And then see how it's kind of big looking? I really don't want it that big. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it to 0 0.05. Now that's probably going to be a little too small, right? So I need it a little bit big, a little bit wider than that. In fact, let me zoom in. Okay, so offset. And we said that the 0 0.05 was too much. So let's try 0.75. Oh, sorry, 0 0.75. Okay, so that's a little bit more, right? And let's just, for giggles, take a look at one, all right? Now, I really think that with the one, okay, um, that is probably plenty and gives me plenty of room to place my designs. The other thing is, is that the offset, you can see where like right here, where the H and the F are, like everything's connected. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit apply. And then I'm going to move the hello out of the way. 
and here is my hello offset. I am going to go to contour and see that tiny little spot right there? I don't want that one. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to go find it and I'm going to turn it off. So now it's gone. It's not going to cut. And then I think this A, this right A right here, I can just click on that or I can click here in the panel. So those two in particular are super tiny and I just don't want to mess with those kind of cuts. But this one's kind of thin, but I'm going to go ahead and leave it. I think that'll be okay. And then I'm going to just let it be. So that's my offset. Okay. And I am going to change my offset to white. All right. And the reason why is because I'm going to bring it up here and I want to be able to see where it is. So I'm just going to place it right here for right now. Okay. I'm going to come over here to my pumpkin and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go to offset and this is at 0.1. Let's try 0.75. Let's see if that's, oh, I did it again, 0 0.075. Move that down so you can see. So I'm going to go to offset. This is the 0.1, so you can see how, you know, thick it is. Let's do 0 0.075 and see if we like that any better. I think 0 0.075 is plenty for this one. So I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. And again, it comes in black. I'm going to move my orange pumpkin out of the way and I'm going to come over here and then I'm going to go look at contour one more time and that's not too small. I'm going to go ahead and leave that, All right? I'm just going to let that be and that's going to be that little spot right there. Okay, so then I am going to change that one to white and I'm going to zoom back out for us. Okay, moving back over here. I'm going to drag that pumpkin and I'm going to put him up there. All right, so essentially what's going to happen is that we're gonna we're gonna slice out those white offsets from this buffalo check and then we're gonna place those in there like that and then we're gonna press the mug all at one time and it's just gonna look amazing so this I'm so excited about this and this is what I like to do I like to play around in design space and try different things and get different things to work because I love to layer, but I don't like to do one layer at a time. So I'm going to move the pumpkin and the hello fall out of the way. Now these, I'm not going to cut these. I'm leaving them here just for us to visualize what we're doing. And before we go to the cut settings, I will be hiding these. I don't need them. Now, as far as these offsets, the first thing is I am not going to touch their size. They, they are sized for the shapes themselves, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this Hello Fall pumpkin mug and I'm gonna link it down in design space. But I am gonna have to, um, because the pattern fill right here, this, because it is, um, because it is from another website, I'm probably gonna have to change it back to like a gray. So you just, just know that um, you would have to just, instead of putting gray on your mat, you would put the buffalo check on your mat or whatever pattern paper, uh, pattern infusible ink you're using. Now, if I can find some buffalo check that is already in design space, then I will leave it. When you open it, you'll see it. If you don't see it when you open the file, you'll know that design space did not have that as an available pattern in and of itself. So um, I will link that pattern for you that I did use in the description. So in case you do want to go get that pattern for other purposes, you can. It has selected the offset for both of them. And what I want to do is I want to align and then I want to go to center vertically. Then those two offsets in relation to each other, they are both centered vertically from top to bottom. Exactly. Okay, and then the other thing I'm gonna do is, I think I'm gonna move, I'm just using my right arrow. I'm not using my mouse, because if I use my mouse, it's gonna move that thing around kind of crazy. So I'm gonna move that to where I just have a little bit of space, and then I'm gonna do the same thing with the pumpkin. Okay, and I'm just kind of spreading them out, because this is kind of the, center of that mug or the other side of the mug is going to have the handle right here. So I want them fairly close. Pumpkin's in a good spot. 
and then the fall's in a good spot. So everything's in a good spot. I am going to just select both of them one more time just in case I moved them center vertically. Okay, they didn't move. So then what I want to do is I want to have them both selected and I want to come over here to combine and I want to click on that and I want to go to weld. And what that's going to do is going to make both of those pieces, you can see here that they are a weld result. They are one layer. They're one, basically they're one SVG item. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that weld and I'm going to select just the buffalo check, right? I don't need to worry about this white part in the back yet. So the weld of the offsets and the buffalo check. I have them both selected. And then what I want to do is I want to come back to the line and I want to do center vertically. Okay. Did you see how it moved it down just ever so slightly? I like to do a slice that way. I know for a fact everything is the way I want. So I'm going to do slice. So the buffalo check is one layer and then the little offsets, which I turned into one little image. That's a layer. Okay. And then all right, I'm going to bring that out. And I'm going to bring that out. And then if I look, see how this buffalo check, um, I know I'm moving it, but do you see how it has the offsets? All right. So then I'm going to put that back in there. All right. So these, I actually, oh, I don't want to grab that pumpkin. I'm going to grab that and get rid of it. I'm going to grab this, get rid of that. Okay. So now you can see right here we have the back layer this is actually what we're going to want it to cut out of our infusible ink sheet so we have these tabs that will help us get everything onto our mug and then this will actually be what we keep right that so everything else is all that white is what we're going to weed out of the infusible ink sheet so what i want to do now is i want to grab this slice result here and i want to grab the back and then I'm going to go to align and I'm going to do align center. So now everything is centered up. Select both. And then I want to attach. You need to attach them because when we go to the other deal, then we've got to make sure that it's going to cut correctly. Let's see what this little thing says here. Oh, Okay, so see how it says the image is too large for the eight and a half? So that's because we have this print and cut thing going on, right? So I actually need to change this print and cut. Let's go and change that to basic. All right, so I changed it to basic. And I'm going to go ahead and make it that little charcoal color, okay? And don't, don't worry about the colors, okay? So I changed it from a printing cut to a basic cut. So now it doesn't want to print anything and the Buffalo check, you know, it, it's not there. All right. Um, if I were to go into colors, you know, there's no, there's no pattern for that. Right. So when you open design space, you're actually not going to see the buffalo check at all because it's going to want to do print and cut. I forgot about that. And I don't want it to confuse you or, or cause, a, cause an issue. So when you open Design Space, it's going to look like this. Let's go. Now I'm going to leave these in the file for you. Okay, so if you need these, then they're going to be there. But I am going to hide them for right now because I don't need them and I'll have them turned on for you, all right? And then this slice result, I do need to put it back here, all right? So don't worry about the color again because you're going to put whatever color on your map that you want. So this is just for design space. So this is now attached, and it needs to stay attached when you go to, to cut it, all right? And then we're going to go ahead. I'm going to use my joy today, actually, because... This is, there's the joy mat has plenty of space to, to handle this. All right, so I'm going to do the joy and I'm going to go ahead and click make. And I'm going to walk you through those little settings really quick before we go set up the mat and do all the cutting. You do have to mirror. So 
I want to show you something that is new in design space. So I have the mat, right, four and a half by 12. I'm not going to change mirror on purpose. You do want to mirror, but I want to show you a new feature. So I'm going to like not do it. All right, so I'm going to click continue because it looks fine. And then I'm going to connect to the joy. Okay, now that I've connected to the joy, if I were to select iron on, okay, and I don't know if you've ever noticed, but have you ever noticed how these little banners are different, right? Different colors, like fabric, this is pink. Cardstock is green, right? Iron on is kind of blue. Well, teal, really. Vinyl is blue. Like, I just noticed that a couple weeks ago. So apparently I'm not paying attention. But anyway, if I were to click on Infusible Ink Transfer Sheet, which I have bookmarked already, if you don't have it bookmarked, you can just go to Browse All Materials and go find that. Okay, so I'm gonna, so it says, make sure mirror, look at that, mirror on. Design space automatically turns mirror on for iron on and infusible ink. So now for all of us who get in a rush, like me, and we sometimes forget to mirror our images when we're doing iron on and infusible ink it's going to do it for you so now look over here see the mirror is on now you can go ahead and turn the mirror on before you ever select you're right you can totally do that and i do recommend that you get in that habit and stay in that habit but in, in the event that you're like me and you're rushing and you just forget to turn the mirror on the minute you choose infusible ink transfer sheet or iron on of any kind like any of those materials then design space is on automatically mirror it for you so the infusible ink transfer sheets I do always choose more it works for me so every machine is different uh, you might want to test it out before you commit to a project do a little test but uh, more pressure works for me so I'm gonna do that and then the fine point blade is already in the joy. We're going to go to the overhead camera really quick and prep that mat. And then we're going to load into the machine. It'll measure everything, make sure everything's good. Then it'll prompt us to click that go button and it'll cut it out for us. So let's head on to the overhead camera and we will quickly get that mat ready. So I am going to move my coasters out of the way. Tell you what, I just love those ceramic coasters that come from Cricut. They make me so happy. All right, so we have, I have my designs here. Now I don't need these yet because I gotta wait till this gets cut out. So I have my mat right here and I'm gonna bring in my joy. Okay, okay bring that in and then this is where the feasible ink is. Okay, actually I'm going to close that up for a minute. So if you have not worked with infusible ink before, what you will find is that the colors, when you pull them out of this bag, they're not as vibrant and deep as these, and that's okay. So the first thing that we're going to do is going to get this open. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is going to open this up. And now you want to save this bag. By the way, it comes with some little instructions. It comes with a little swatch here. And I'm going to show you a little, a little trick here with this little t-shirt swatch. It comes with a little desiccant packet. And you want to hold on to that because this is going to help keep your infusible ink sheets dry. So I'm going to pull this out. Save that bag. Okay, so this particular... Oh, by the way, you do get butcher paper. So this particular box is going to come with the butcher paper, and then it's going to have the stripey pattern and the buffalo check pattern. Now, something that I started doing, and I kind of showed you this when I did the coasters, because the coasters were done using this animal print. So I had an epiphany this week, and what I decided is... I, I can never remember, especially if I haven't used a particular infusible ink, I can never remember sometimes, like, what is it really going to look like? So what I did is I took a little square of each of the colors that were in that box, and I put them 
on here and I just pressed them with my Easy Press Mini and made a little swatch. That right there to me is golden. So now I have this and I know exactly what those colors are going to look like. And I don't know about you guys, but that looks pretty darn good, you know? So um, that's, and that's how I decided. Now this is ceramic and this is t-shirt material, right? So I, I know that the orange is slightly different, but I do know that that is going to be pretty vibrant for a coaster compared to this one, right? So in my, in my two cents uh, opinion, this right here is golden. And then this, this is what it looks like. So if I grab this, see how it's very muted on the paper, you know, rolls, but then when you press it, it turns really dark. That is going to look amazing on that mug. So anyway, just wanted to share this little, this little tip that I just thought of this week when I was working with my infusible ink is because I have all these and I don't know what to do with them because I'm not going to use them. Now I realize I can use them to swatch everything out. Maybe I'm late to the party and everybody has been doing this and I just now figured that out. So if you already knew that, well, I'm so glad because apparently I never really thought of it that way. Thought I would share my little epiphany and if it's something you never thought of, great. I'm so glad that uh, I could bring you along. And if you already knew that, well, then definitely gold star for you because I am a little late to the party. All right, let's stop talking about these swatches and let's get this ink going. I'm just going to separate these rolls and move that out of the way. And then while, while this is cutting, what I'll do is I will roll everything back up and I will put it back in that black bag with this little packet and seal that up. And another thing is you absolutely want to make sure that you um, save your uh, save your scraps of infusible ink because I have literally used the tiniest pieces of infusible ink for projects. Um, like especially when I'm layering things in or like I made a mug for my dad for Father's Day and I really... You know what I needed? I needed literally like a, a half inch tall by two inch wide piece. And it was a like a heartbeat with a saw blade. It was so cool. Anyway, save these little pieces because infusible ink, it is, um, it can get pricey and it's fun. So lots, lots of things you can do for it. Okay, so what I basically did is I'm going to Reuse. So this piece here, I'm just going to set that aside, take the protective deal off of my mat. Now this particular mat, I think I'm at the point where I need to probably clean this mat, but I have this little piece of washi tape here because this particular corner, I don't know why, but it doesn't like to grip even when it's clean. So you can always just put some washi if you need it. And what I'm going to do is shiny side down. So just like your, uh, your iron-on vinyl, shiny side down, we're going to do shiny side down on our mat. We're going to line it up. Okay. And make sure your hands are dry. Make sure that they're clean and dry. No oils, no lotion, no perfume. Grab my brayer. Get that. Okay, and then this corner just loves to pop up. So I literally am just going to go like this. And um, so if you ever have a mat where even when it's, I mean, cause this is a not an old mat really, um, but you could just use some washi and um, just put it down where you need it to hold this down. So now this isn't gonna move. So what we're gonna do is we're going to just stick this into the joy. 
just going to pull this in. Just going to measure the mat, the material, make sure everything's good. Okay, and then on my screen, it is prompting me to click that go button. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And while this is cutting, I'm going to go ahead and do a mid craft cleanup. And that's a great way to keep your craft space um, organized and um, clean from driving you crazy. Okay, so everything is um, cut out. And so I'm gonna pull this off of my mat. Oh, another tip. When you get your mats, write the date that you put them into service on the back of your mat. Um, especially if you're like me and you have like a bunch of mats, it kind of just helps you keep track of like how long you've had a mat and you know, is it, one that eventually they'll have to be replaced, but you know, how long have you had it? And you can kind of rotate them in and out so you can kind of make sure that they, they get equal wear and tear usage. All right, so I'm going to come over here and I'm actually gonna cut this, okay, right here. I'm gonna cut this off and I'm actually gonna save that. We have our design and everything. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go through and we're gonna just, where all these cut lines are, we're gonna kind of crack and bend the infusible ink because we're gonna weed out that pumpkin and we're gonna weed out the word, you know, the offset so that we can put our pieces that we've already cut from the other project. Okay. All right, so, and don't use a weeding tool. Um, just use your fingers. And if you need help with some smaller intricate pieces, then just use, you know, just use some tweezers, or yeah, tweezers, not a weeding tool. So see this one here? Look how beautiful that weeded out. Guess what's going in my save pile? Cause I can absolutely use this for something soon. So I'm gonna set that aside, hold on to that. And then here is my offset. And I'm gonna gently pull that up, check that out. So like I could do a white, I could do a white on top of these that would look great okay i'm going to save these because these are these are still really good pieces all right moving on this right here is our pumpkin and our hello fall areas so what i'm going to do i'm going to pull these pieces out okay i'm going to put the leaf and these guys back in here. And then this is gonna have to go in a dark, dry area just like the rest of my infusible ink, okay? That I hold on to, uh, you know, the boxes. All right, so here we go. Let's start putting these. I have to go in here. And I have to start putting this where I think that it needs to go. Okay, let me grab this little mat thing here. This is just, I got this from scrapbook.com and it really is just like a, like a piece of plastic. It's kind of grippy. Um, it's not super sticky or anything, but it's, it just kind of holds my stuff in place. So that's a good thing because I've got to get 
my pumpkin leaves or my pumpkin stem and leaf in the right spot. Alright, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this in two separate things. So here is that part of my stem there. And there's that. Okay, so that's there. And then we're going to have these pumpkin pieces, and I need to see the coaster. All right, so this big part goes here in the middle, just like that. All right, okay. One more piece of pumpkin. Okay, so there's my pumpkin. And that's that's looking good. And then I'm just going to use my brayer. And I'm using that to get those pumpkin pieces, you know, really adhered down on that. Um, on that uh, carrier sheet. All right, so here is the fall. Right, so here's the hello fall, and now I'm going to turn it over and see if anything needs to be moved, and then I can move that back out of the way. Okay, so this says, this says hello fall. I think that looks pretty good. And then there's our pumpkin and that looks pretty good. So this, I think that looks nice. This is now pieced together. All right, now what we're gonna do is get our mug ready. If you're going to use this as a gift, then I would personally, I would save, I would save these and that way you can put them back on the mug. Okay, so for our mug, the easiest thing that I have found is to put your hand inside the mug. Okay, I used to just kind of hold it by the handle and it to me, I struggled with that. So I'm going to do a lint-free cloth, and then I'm going to go over with a, with a lint roller, and go back over that cloth again. And I'm just going to double check. I kind of do two runs of cloth and lint roller. That's a lot. Look at that. It's a lot of dust and stuff, even though it just came out of the bag. Okay, then to get this prepped, I take the mug and put it where the handle is facing me. And then I grab this and I am going to get it centered. And before I tape anything down, I like to just double check. Yes, I hear you. I just like to double check that it is the same distance. And then I make sure it's lined up nicely. So from that edge of that handle, 
so that's four. It's, a, it's about five eighths ish there. Okay, so so it's pretty centered. I just now have to. All I have to do now is just make sure it's lined up nicely with the the bottom of the mug and the top of the mug. So I'm going to get some heat resistant tape and this is just the Cricut brand. Um, I have definitely used the Hobby Lobby brand which is just fine. The Hobby Lobby brand is just fine. And then I'm going to tape that down. And I'm always really generous with the tape. Now some people do and some people don't. I do. I go around the top and the bottom because do you see these gaps right here? Like right here, there's a big, there's a gap. So, and then there's a gap here. So what I like to do is make sure that even along the rim of my mug, everything is really pressed tightly against that surface. So I just take some heat resistant tape and I go around the perimeter like so. And then I just fold it over and I'm pressing, I'm pressing in as I'm pressing down. And what that will do is that will that will press the top of this design along the top of the muck. And there will not be, there hopefully won't be any areas that are um, light or, you know, ghosted or whatever. So, and this tape really is not, it's not real expensive at all. So I don't make a mug every day, but when I do, I do a lot of taping. It just works for me. But you feel feel free to tape or not tape, you know, based on what you feel is best for you. And I would say that's with any craft project. Um, this, you know, our community has so many wonderful creators, and I think ultimately we take inspiration from others and we adjust our projects to what works best for us and our supplies and our machines and and what we want our projects to be okay so none of this is not going nowhere this is nowhere that really is not grammatically correct <laughs> oh goodness it's not going anywhere okay so now i'm going to bring in my mud press all right so with the mud press i always put it on my heat resistant mat I'm going to put it in here. So when I put the handle down, these lights will go across while it is um, cooking. And then when I take it out, I'll put it here and I'll let it cool completely before we reveal. So when all of this is happening, I'm usually doing a lot of cleanup and or prepping for the next craft. This green area here on the Cricut mug press is that is the hot and then the, you got the bottom plate as well. So make sure that you are not touching that green area at all. And then when we put um, when we when we put the mug in, I'm going to adjust it a little bit because the green will come over. Here, I'll just show you. So the green, I'm going to put this in, and it's there. We go. Now the handle will stay cool no matter what, so I won't have to worry about that. And then I'm going to turn this this way because I want to make sure that that uh, design is fully covered. And then I'm going to push. Actually, I got to turn it just a little bit more. Okay. So what I was doing right then is I was adjusting where the mug handle was so that the design was fully encased in that green part. So now what's going to happen is these lights will light up as it goes through the process. And then when it's done, it'll beep at us. This is very fragrant, so make sure that you do this in a well-ventilated area or put a fan on, open a window, etc. So I have my side window open. I'm gonna let this just cook 
away while I do a cleanup. So I will see you soon. So this is now beeping at us. I am going to raise the lid here and then I'm literally just going to take this. This handle is still cool. Um, you can feel the heat, you know, it's warm um, emanating off of there, but the handle is cool in and itself. I'm just going to slide this up out of here very gently. And I'm going to place it here on this, this mat. And in about uh, five, 10 minutes, I will move this to the glass mat, but I want to just kind of get it cooled down. I'm going to turn that off. Okay. Close that up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this cool and I have the greatest success by waiting. All right. So I'm, you know, we love to get our heat resistant gloves and unwrap it all and see how it looks, but I have the best success by waiting. So I'm going to wait about five, 10 minutes. And then I'm going to move it to the glass mat so it can help draw out that heat. Um, and I'm, so that way it'll be a gradual. And then um, and I'm going to wait another five, 10 minutes after I move it to the glass mat before I unwrap this for you. Now in your time, it'll be instant, but for me, it'll probably be about, oh, I usually let them sit for about 15, 15 to 20 minutes. I think it is time for us to reveal the mug. I am so excited about this and I have really let this, I mean, it is still barely warm, but I have absolutely um, allowed it to cool. I mean, you can, you can tell that the mug has been heated, but it is cool to touch. Um, so basically I am going to unwrap all of this stuff here. Let's see going to remove all this tape. So this is the only time where I sit here and go, hmm, did I really need all that tape? And then the rest of my mind says, yes, yes, we did. Because I just, the mugs and the materials are just too expensive to um, mess up. I have been very fortunate that I haven't, um, I haven't ever had to redo a mug. So I, I would like to keep that streak going. Um, I, I, you know, I'm sure at some point I'm gonna end up having to, to redo one. But um, so far, so good. Okay, are you guys ready? Let's check it out. Oh my goodness. First of all, look at all the ink gone. Now, this right here, this is just this little spot right there. You can see, like this is why we wanna make sure we get our mug in the press correctly, but oh my word, look at that. All the ink is off. I know you see the shadow on the black, but essentially all of the ink is off. I was able to use up not, you know, a beautiful pattern that I've been dying to use and scraps from a previous project. So save those scraps. Guys, look, look how pretty this is. Oh my goodness. This turned out and then you can see the gradient. It goes from like that, that deep orange up to that lighter, like yellow mustard color. So here is here is the uh, coaster, and I took the words out, put them on the mug. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. And then we go around. This, this buffalo check is fantastic. I, okay, 10 out of 10. I highly recommend that infusible ink buffalo check. And then this right here, this is my, now this, is from the center of the of the one sheet and this is kind of from the edge of the one sheet so like this was the center and so the edge going that way so the sheet w went this way but these are the coasters and this is the mug oh my word i cannot get i can't get over this i was thinking about giving this as a gift but i'm gonna have to do another one and keep I'm gonna have to keep 
<laughs> oh my goodness. And this right here, that is definitely, that's that little bitty tiny piece. So remember that teeny tiny piece right here. And you could leave that off or you could leave that on. That would be up to you. But isn't that amazing? Oh my goodness. So I cannot believe this worked better than my, um, than my vision. Okay, couple things. One, I will link the video for these coasters. I will link the designs. Um, I will link the designs in design space. Um, for the project, so you could recreate these. Now, when you open Design Space, you won't see the buffalo check, okay? So it'll just be that charcoal um, color, but you can use whatever suits your fancy. But the slice is already done for you. So all you have to do is cut this piece and then cut the Hello Fall and the pumpkin separately. Like you really, it's three cuts. Um, you don't have to do any of the slicing and all of that. It is done for you. But now that you know how to do it, you can totally make your own creations. This is fantastic. And then don't forget when you're using your infusible ink, go ahead and take advantage of these little t-shirt deals. I wish I had been doing this all along. Is go ahead and swatch them out. And then that way you'll know um, this will be very helpful as I go forward with future projects. And I think I'm going to do this with all of my infusible inks. But yeah, swatch them out so that you know what you're working with and you can make good decisions for your project based on what you need. So with that all being said, guys, this this is turned out, I just am speechless. Okay, I'm not speechless, but I, I just can't get over how amazing this looks. I think I'm going to have to go and fill up this mug with some coffee like right now. So this project was a success. If you found this project helpful, inspiring, or in, in any way, make sure you share it with your crappy friends. Don't forget to hit that like button. Um, and if you are not subscribed, my goal here by Thanksgiving is to have um, at least 50% of my viewers actually come on board as subscribers. Again, subscribing is absolutely free and uh, hitting like, engaging in comments, etc. That is a great way to support the channel. So until I see you in the next video, I want you to enjoy the fall season that is now upon us. Get inspired, make some wonderful crafts in your craft space. Let me know what you're working on and let me know what you'd like to see coming to the channel. All right, so until I see you in the next video, as always, happy crafting. Thank you all so much for watching today. I'm so glad that you can join me at my craft table. If you're not already, I'd love to have you as a subscriber and don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you'll know when new videos arrive. Have a great day and as always, happy crafting.